It made me more proud of my home, so much so that this year I won a certificate for my garden, which all started with this parking bay. I know that sounds mad, but because I felt so proud of my home, it felt my home for, instance, for the first time that I've been here for so many years. When I was able to park my vehicle and get out on my own, it felt like actually for the first time ever, it was my home. My mum was a recovering alcoholic from a very young age. I was put into care when I was two days old because she wanted to drink, you know. And then it was my son that made me realise I didn't want to be like that. And I was just trying to find that settlement. But I couldn't, I didn't know who to turn to. And then it was social services got involved and they found, well, Carol, who works for the council. Because we, we weren't allowed to have him in our hallways, we got communal hallways, we weren't, the fire officer wouldn't allow them in there. We can have them outside because it would be difficult, because it's a pathway, and then it would be difficult to charge them up. They thought, well, being as there's two or three of us now with the tricycles or scooters, whatever they call them, that they gave us the pods. Plug it into the electric, there's electric in there, you see, and you plug in for your batteries and everything. It's super. It is, it's a super little thing. Do you like yours? Oh, I love mine. Yeah. Well, I used to, I used to, when I first had mine, I used to pay a bloke to come and take the battery up the stairs for me because I couldn't lift it and put it on charge in my bedroom and then come back a couple of days later and take it off and bring it down. Whereas now it just charges all the time that's in the pod. We're lucky if we want anything done, they're always quick to do it. So well, we got no grumbles with that. Oh, you little smart <laughs> We might get a rent reduction. <laughs> oh, that won't come out on it, will it? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> what do you mean I'm being so quiet? <laughs> what can you see? Can you see the sheepies? Are they in the field today? No. <laughs> my dad lives up the road, and my brother and his wife and their children, so I needed to be here, really, to be close to them. And as my partner works away all week, that's important to me. It just, it makes me feel safe. I particularly like the Orchard Close development. I think it, it demonstrates some of the best quality housing, which meets development quality requirements. So it actually it exceeds development quality requirements that the Welsh Government has set, set for affordable housing. It was a local contractor who built, built the properties using um, a hundred percent local labour so it really did help to keep keep the money in powers it was the you know powers pounds spent in powers I think because we had Logan then it was just really nice to create a family home I don't think he had that before whereas we've got that now I think we're a village that's really struggling with young families in and our school struggling and I think it's important that we get young families in and I think affordable housing and more mid Wales houses will do that, it's important. The adaptations, people might just look at them on a piece of paper and not realise actually the difference that they make to my life and many others is huge. The ramp's the difference between this property being suitable for me to live in and not it's that simple. I mean, the wheelchair to me, it's my legs really. I mean, it's absolutely massive. I mean, you can't imagine what it's like to be essentially trapped in your own home. And I was beginning to hate these walls. I couldn't even get myself out the door to sit out on my porch. And these adaptations, they don't only impact my life in a positive way, they're also helping others around me as well. Like my mother, for instance, the care agency that come here, you know, sometimes they can't park, they need to be able to park. So you can imagine, it, it, it's not only helped me, it's helped those others that are helping me as well. I first came to see Alison about 18 months ago. She, yeah, she was having problems with her existing oil system. The radiators were either boiling hot or stone cold and there was no control at all. So I spoke to her about uh, what we could do for her. What we could do was install another oil system or what I preferred option is to install an air source heat pump is what we've actually installed here now. 
with bills, it, my old system, it, in the winter time, it was costing between eight and nine hundred pounds, depending on the the price at the time of uh, the oil. I was finding with a direct debit, but by the time I needed the second lot of five hundred liters, I hadn't paid or finished paying the direct debit for the first lot. So then I was running up bills, which was causing a lot of problems, you know, stress, stress and that sort of thing, you know. As horrible as it sounds, when my children, when heating was like that before, they used to spend a lot of time in their beds with their quilt on them because they were cold. And now the boys come downstairs and, and that, so we have more of a, a family feel to the home now. We started three years ago on bungalows. We started five bungalows and we've just gone on from there. We've had, I think, 12 the first year and then 15, and we're just going on. We've got about 140 county wide now, right from a little one bed bungalow right the way to this property, which is a five bed. So it works all, all through. We've reduced people's running costs and also we've brought people out of fuel poverty. If the council hadn't have thought, hang on, this girl needs help, put me into this first hostel, which we were there for almost a year. So we were settled kind of there and then we got this house and we have people that help us around. We have the school, we can go on nice walks, which we never used to do because we were cooped up in an unfamiliar place. So we couldn't leave. So we just stayed in that confinement of the house. I had a home, I had something to work towards. It wasn't not worrying where I'm gonna sleep one week or is my friend annoyed with me because I've stayed too long this time or are they annoyed because Casey's keeping them awake? It was, this was mine. This is, I could do what I wanted to it and my son could grow up somewhere safe and secure and he's not then worrying about, oh, who's this person now? Who's that person? It was actually just one familiar face. Something we, we'd never had before. The help, like they help even little things like say if I'm struggling with filling out a form, they go, okay, I'll come in, we'll help you, we'll give it to this person. And they got the compass involved as well with a support worker and she she deals now with obviously coming to appointments with me and they don't have to do that. And they did, because they listen. He loves football. He goes out and plays with his friends. He has meals at friends, you know, he has friends over. He sits down and he does homework and I do it with him. We've got a place to do all that. We're a proper family unit now. The only thing I'd like to add is to say a huge thank you to everybody for making my life better. And I mean that, I do. I'm not just saying it, I mean it. Yeah, it, I, they can't, I can't understand how grateful I am to be able to live my life the way that I want to within my capability, they probably don't understand or, or see the end result. But the end result, in my instance, is a more confident, more capable, more sociable me. And I like that because I was becoming a bit of a recluse.